Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. This is Wendy. Today we're going to be doing three Dollar Tree farmhouse projects for our home decor. And if you're new here, welcome. And I hope you will consider hitting that subscribe button so that you can become a part of our crafting family. For our first project, we're going to start with three of these wooden wire brushes, barbecue brushes, I think is what they're used for four skinny bottles of some sort i'm a big salmon and capers girl so i have these always and i save them because they're so cute if you don't have that you can try using the votive candle holders and then just make this into a candle holder my husband was so sweet and went and got me a drill and so i'm going to be using a spade bit this doesn't actually work out but you'll see that later some gorilla glue some lightweight spackling this is from dollar tree some one inch linen ribbon and i got this from the people at burlapfabric.com some pliers some hair scrunchies some lamb's ear from walmart and i get this for two dollars a bundle and it comes with two pretty generous bunches some jute twine some nautical rope, four of the Tumbling Tower game blocks, some Waverly antique wax and a foam sponge brush, and some white Waverly chalk paint in the matte finish, and then our glue gun, scissors, and our sanding block. And so the first thing we're going to do is get our brushes ready and I just took my pliers and started pulling out the wire bristles from each of the little holes. Once I got all of my bristles out, I took a painter's spatula and filled in all of those holes with my spackling. And you want to make sure that the spackling kind of overflows from the holes because once it dries we're going to sand it down so you don't want it to just be flush because it might not fill it completely So while my spackling was drying, I got my bottles ready by peeling off the labels. And there's a lot of ways to do this, and I've had a lot of viewers tell me different methods that they use. So I just went ahead and used my Cricut spatula, got the main parts of the label off, and then used acetone to remove the gooey, sticky residue. And then by the time I got those done, my spackling was dry, and I used my sanding block to make those smooth and sanded down. Once I got those all sanded and ready to go, I took my Gorilla Glue and I'm going to glue these together. And if you do kind of a thin line of the Gorilla Glue, it works like E6000, but I did notice that it does dry a little bit faster than the E6000, which would probably take overnight to completely adhere. So once I got them all glued and put together and they were nice and straight, I put on a couple of hair scrunchies just to keep them in place while I worked on the bottom. So to make little legs, I used a couple of the Jenga pieces or tumbling blocks and put two together using hot glue. And then I'm going to place those on the bottom of my little rack. Once everything was completely dry, I took off my little scrunchies and used my Waverly Antique Wax to paint the entire piece. I had never used this before, so I wasn't sure how it would turn out or what kind of strokes to use. So I started on the bottom kind of as a testing area so that I wouldn't mess up on the top. Thank you. 
So I really liked the wood tone color of this wax, but because of my spackling and the little holes, most of it will be covered up, but I just didn't like the way it was more pronounced because of the wax. So I went in with my Waverly White chalk paint and covered the whole thing. And then I do want this to be rustic looking, like I said, and so I'm going to sand it down and let this darker color show through. Once I got the top and sides completely painted white, I took my painter's spatula and went in between the planks so that it still looked like kind of a shiplap effect. And then once I did that, I came back in with my sanding block and sanded all around the corners and in between the planks so that they would show up more. To cutesy up my bottles, I took some of the jute twine and a little bit of glue and just wrapped the top part where the threads of the lid would be. And so that kind of covers it up. It doesn't matter that it's a jar, but just to make it more cute and interesting. And then after I got those completely wrapped, I'm gonna take some of my linen ribbon and a needle and thread. And I've shown you guys how to make flowers before and so it's kind of the same idea except this time we're going to make more of like a pinwheel look so all I did was took my needle and thread and you want to make sure you have a pretty big knot so that it doesn't go through the linen fabric and then just go in and out and make a stitch all the way probably about 10 inches long and then pull that together so that it gathers and then sew it up on the side to make a complete circle or in this case a pinwheel. So before I glued my pinwheels to my jars, I wanted to make sure I knew how far down they were gonna go once I drilled into the wood for their little indentations to sit in. So I first marked where I was gonna drill and I was really excited to use my new power tool, but this turns out to be an epic fail only because my spade bit was one and a half inches and this really needed a two to two and a quarter inch opening and they don't make that or at least Home Depot doesn't carry them. So I marked where I was going to put them and then I proceeded to drill into the areas where I wanted them to sit. So this took a little time too but it was fun because I was excited for how this was going to turn out. 
So once I realized that they were not going to fit, I was really bummed. So I went back to Home Depot and got a different kind of bit that was two inches. So the problem with that one is that there's a piece, there's a like a drill bit that's in the middle of this. And that would have worked had I not already cut out what using the spade bit. So it didn't have anything to bite onto, so it was jumping around and scratching up my piece, and here's how it turned out. I even asked Michael J to help me on this, and he said it was a kind of a lost cause and I should just scrap it. But I was really proud of my paint job and how it was looking thus far, and so I did not want to just put it in the scrap box, and so I continued on and tried to think of a way to save this piece. So I took my nautical rope and wrapped it around and used some hot glue and it totally hid all of the mess ups and I think it ended up being, if not as good, probably better than what I had originally planned. So once that catastrophe was averted, I took my pinwheels and hot glued those to the front of the bottles and then took my lamb's ear and cut that down at the first little notch of the stem. And if you don't have wire cutters, you can bend back and forth and it will come off rather easily. And here it is all done. I love how this ended up turning out even though it took some grief and some ingenuity to get it to finally work but if you persevere and stick with something it ends up working out no matter what so another idea instead of the lamb's ear i thought it would be cute to also put some colored pencils in there so that the kids can color at the table and this is a cute way to display those as well i didn't cover the hole that you see in the front with spackle i thought the hole was kind of cute you could totally fill it in if you want but i just like the look of it and it just gives it a little more character so i hope you guys like this For our second project, we're gonna be using one of these large Easter tags. And then again, some more of the Waverly wax in antique. So for this project, I'm going to use the back of my tag and I just cut off the jute twine holder at the top. And then using my foam brush, I did a layer of the wax and I just used the flat surface of the foam brush to make sure that it was semi-flat, but I also wanted to give it some streaks so that it would resemble wood. Once I got to the finish I wanted, I continued by using some pretty heavy gauge wire, some jute twine, five pieces of those tumbling blocks, and then I purchased these beads. They're just under one inch, so they're 20 millimeters, and I got these, it's 200 pieces for $12.99. And I got those at Amazon, and so I'll put a link in the description box below. 
So this is the wire that gets my hands all dirty. For some reason, there's some kind of finish on it that is like greasy or something. So I didn't want to get my hands dirty, so I put some gloves on. But I want to make this a kind of like the hanger, but it's going to be a beaded garland. So I want the sides to be uneven, so I made one longer than the other. And then I started threading my beads on, and I did one side first, and then threaded the wire through the hole at the top of the tag, and then threaded more beads on the other side. Then I wanted to crisscross them, and so I just wrapped around about the area that I wanted so that they would intersect. And since they're on wire, they'll stay in place. So now I'm gonna make my tassels, and it's a variation of a tassel. I'm using that linen ribbon from burlapfabric.com, and I just cut a few pieces about six inches long and folded them in half. Then I'm gonna wrap it around the wire and then take my needle nose pliers and make that wire feed back up into that first bead so that it stays in place. And then I'm gonna take a piece of jute twine and wrap it around about half an inch to an inch below the top of the ribbon to make it resemble a tassel. Then I decided I was gonna use my Silhouette Cameo 3 to cut out the word Faith. So I first measured my tag to see how large I needed to make the word, and it came out to five and a half inches by three inches. And so I used a ivory color of vinyl and cut that word out and then weeded it, put my transfer tape on top, and then applied it to the top part of my tag. Now I'm gonna take my tumbling blocks and I started with the very center piece to make sure it was in the middle and at the right area so that the rest of them would line up perfectly. And I'm just gonna make a cross to go right below the word faith. Once I knew everything was in place and in the right spot, I hot glued my beaded garland to the top of the tag so it wouldn't move. And here it is all done. I'm absolutely in love with this. I love the scalloped edge of this, this tag, which is a little bit different than some of the others I've seen. But I absolutely love how the wood tone of the cross and the natural wood tone of the beads matches and along with that ivory color of vinyl, I just love this piece. I hope you guys like it too.
For our final project, we're gonna be making a sign and I am using a piece of heavy duty cardboard really, but it's the stuff that you put on the back of a shelf once you build it. We didn't use it for the shelf that we built and so I'm using it in this project. I'm also gonna be using this windmill wind chime from Dollar Tree and Frisco Craft is such an awesome company. I'm gonna be using some of their vinyl for cutting out my words from my Silhouette Cameo 3. And so with that is all of the goodies that we'll need to do this project. But I'm also having to use a 24 inch cutting mat instead of the standard 12 by 12. So Frisco, they have offered to send me vinyl to bring you some awesome projects. And so I have to tell you their vinyl so far is the best. So as most of you know, I just started my channel four months ago, and so that's the same time when I got my Silhouette Cameo 3. So there's a huge learning curve, and with that, the different products that are out there, and I ordered this on Amazon just because I needed black vinyl, and it was by far the easiest to weed, the easiest to cut, and it has just really been a blessing to me because I don't have as many problems as I do with other brands. So I will highly recommend this product and I'm gonna put their link in the description box below. So now because my sign is so long, it actually measures out to be 33 and a half inches by 15 and a half inches. So I wasn't able to get all of my wordage on one piece of vinyl. So I had to do it in two separate batches. So I cut out my words and then I'm gonna weed everything. And this was kind of fun to do because the letters were so big. So it was really easy to transfer and weed out. So once I got those all separated and cut out, I put my transfer tape on top of them. And then I did the first part, farm and H, and then left a spot open because I'm gonna use the windmill for my O and then added the U-S-E at the end. Then I put my words on the top and at the bottom. So it's gonna say, as for me and my farmhouse, we will serve the Lord. So I just used a speed square and measured up four inches and that way I can make a real light line all the way across so that my words will line up and it will be level. And then later on, I'll go back with a white eraser and take off those marks. So when I placed my words, I put the farm H down first and made it the same distance away from the edge so that when I go to place the last part of my word, I can measure in and make it the same distance from the edge on the right side. And so after I get all of this done, then I'm gonna work on my windmill. So to disassemble my windmill, I just opened up the front part, which is a little cover that hides the rod that goes through and holds the triangle and the bell in the windmill. So I just took that off and it's very thin metal. So I just cut it off with my scissors and then using some pliers, I just wiggled it out of there until it finally broke off and I could pull it out. And then I set that aside until I put the rest of my wordage on to my sign.
You may notice that I didn't use the book chapter or verse from this scripture, which is Joshua 24, 15. And that's because I used the word farmhouse. And so I didn't want to change up the scripture. So most people will know what this is from and how it's kind of a play on words. So then I took some Gorilla Glue and put a bead on the right sides of all of the blades of the windmill and then followed up with some hot glue as well as in the center so that it would stay. Not all of the blades went all the way down, but as long as one did and the middle was on there as well, it adhered just fine. I forgot to mention the font names for this sign. And so for the, as for me and my, and we will serve the Lord, that is in the font Hat Me White. And I'll put that in the description box so you can understand what I just said. And then for the farmhouse, that's called Farm to Market, which I got from defont.com. So now I'm going to use some more of my antique wax and I'm going to take a couple of scrap pieces of one by one woods or pieces of wood that I got from the garage and you can get this at Home Depot but I just had this in Michael J's scrap area and so I didn't have enough to go all the way around and I would have gone to go get more except that I love the way it turned out. So again, using my sponge brush, I'm just going to lay on a layer of the wax and get it to that nice deep colored wood. And then I'm going to go back in with my sanding block and give it a distressed look at all of the edges and on the corners. So to attach the trim, I used the nails that came with the shelving unit to attach to the back of the shelf. So I'm going to turn my sign over and put my trim just under the edge of my sign so that the majority of it is sticking out. But then this way you can't see the edge of the cardboard and there's enough that I can nail those nails into the wood and grab the trim also. And then to make it even more secure, I put some Gorilla Glue down, making sure that I wouldn't have any seepage. So then I hammered in my nails. So I know I've shown you guys this a million times, but it's the best tip I've ever gotten in my life. And so when you run out of a glue stick, just take a little dot of hot glue and put it at the end of that stick and then stick it into the glue gun and it won't fall out. So now I'm taking that little button that was on the front of the windmill and I just hot glued that to the top for the finishing touch. And then using my yardstick, I found the middle of my sign and a sawtooth hanger. You can get these in the picture hanging kits from Dollar Tree. This was from something else that I had left over, but I just placed that down and screwed in the tiny little screws that came with it and it was ready to hang. You could put two, but this is so light in weight that it doesn't matter. As long as you get it in the middle, it'll hang nice and straight. If it does get a little crooked, you can always take a piece of double-sided tape and put that at the bottom so that if it's near a door and it gets knocked and so it kind of gets cockeyed, just that double-sided tape will save you and you don't have to put that second sawtooth hanger. So here it is all done and I am absolutely in love with this. I got to use a power tool when I cut my wood 
and I'm loving this antique wax. I don't normally use that in a lot of my projects, but I thought this was a really good time to kind of coordinate all three pieces since they kind of have the same style and farmhouse vibe to them. So here they are all together, and I am really excited about how they turned out, and I hope you guys like them too. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please give it a thumbs up comment and let me know what you think if you're already a subscriber thank you so much and double check just to make sure that youtube didn't take you off of my subscriber list and if you're not please consider subscribing so that we can continue to grow this channel you can check us out on facebook and instagram and i hope everybody has a blessed day and remember to always be the light bye